But in Calniaro, you don't find any naked, decorated, scarred people anymore. The locals who welcome me were dressed, some like Arabs, others like Europeans, but they all claimed to be Arabs. All boys and men were without exception members of the militia of the Islamic National Party, which rules the country. But I never saw them pray as people do elsewhere in Sudan, and in the night I often heard African drums. What happened? I was asking myself. The huts are still the same as in Lenny's book, and so are the trees and the rocks, but the people are different. El Kitab, an old man told me. The book, the book killed them. Which book? Lenny's book. The agony in this village and the agony of the entire country started soon after Lenny Riefenstahl's book reached Khartoum. Puritanical Islamic Sudan was deeply ashamed of these photographs of naked Nuba, and fundamentalists soon forced them to wear clothes and to adopt the Arab identity. Whoever resisted disappeared. But some of the old classic beauty has remained. The relaxed postures of the children, here I find it. The way the parents take care of them. The way they hug the trees, here I find it. The way they watch the stars and dream. The village of Kao was not conquered by the government army, but by the Sufis from the north. With drumming and jingling of bells, these ascetic nomads found it easy to touch Nuba hearts and to convert the surviving Nuba to Islam. After the Sufis came the Arab politicians. And in their eyes, I can feel the slave hunters. Further south, the endless savannas and swamps of the Nile spread out, the biggest swamps in the world. This is the land of the rebellious Dinkas, the Nuas, and the Shiluks. In the villages scattered around the southernmost Nuba mountain, Liri, there were also dances when the moon was full. But those Nuba who remain in Liri, they also dance as dictated by the victorious Bagara Arab nomads. And so I met Hamid, a nomad belonging to the Bagara tribe. He's getting married this year. He's happy to have found a pretty wife, and in a little while... The Bagara are Arab nomads who have herded cattle in the savannas of the Nuba Mountains for centuries. In Arabic, Bagara means cow. They are traditional neighbors of the Nuba, and the two peoples used to live in harmony, insofar as harmony is possible between nomads and farmers. The Arab nomads would always trample down the Nuba fields until finally the Nuba had had enough. Although third-class citizens themselves, the Bagara received arms from the government in the late 80s. They allowed themselves to be sent in to fight against the now rebellious Nuba. 
Slovenia, Europa. Europa. Sobota, Vilic. As soon as I reached Talodi, I was arrested for the third time since I left Khartoum. And it was from Anuba, in prison with me, that I first heard stories about the concentration camp. After three days of brutal interrogation, I managed to trick them and to escape over the front line. I was afraid that the Nuba rebels might take me for an Arab and shoot me from afar. So in order to show my true color, I stripped to the skin. And we met. Twice. But when I wanted to follow them to the mountains, they rejected me, saying that if they took me, they risked new attacks from the government army. So I had no other choice but to go back to the government side. Turoji. So these are the culprits. These are the men who are burning Nuba homes, raping Nuba women, and locking Nuba children away from their families in camps specially set up for the purpose. These are the slaves who are killing the slaves. This is the Arab strategy to indoctrinate the captured Nuba boys and turn them against their own people. The Nuba are primitive. They must all die. Only then will Sudan be as rich as Saudi Arabia. Do you know how much oil we have here, boasted a Sudanese officer who'd been trained at the military academy in Sarajevo. Sarajevo, in the Nuba Mountains. That's too much irony. Turoji, Angolo, Buram, Reka, these are the names of government strongholds on the southern side of the mountains. Altogether, there are more than 30. The Arabs call them Dar el Salam, peace camps. But in fact, they are well-guarded barracks erected on the ruins of the conquered Nuba villages. They are the bases for the offensive. The concentration camps aimed at converting the Nuba into Arabs, as well as the training grounds for the Janissaries. They told me that the school and the new mosque were erected by UNICEF. What's UNICEF doing here on the government side, I asked myself. And I felt sick. So what's awaiting me in my village, Rekha? Twenty years ago, Rekha was my home. I was happy here. I found the millet threshers in my village in a trance similar to that of 20 years ago. But the threshers themselves were no longer the same Nuba Mesakin. The people in the Rekha concentration camp are new people, forcibly brought here from far away mountains. I found my old house burnt down and destroyed. As far as I could see, there were only ruins and mines, but nobody knew exactly where they were, neither the Arab Nuba nor the Mesakin Nuba rebels dare return to their homes. This country has died.
once a green and neat administrative center of the Nuba Mountains, has turned into a dump yard during the 17 years of the war. The Nuba tribe of Kadugli had been replaced by crossbreeds from all over Sudan who didn't look at all friendly. Men and women, members of the Islamic National Front, kept marching up and down the main street. Nowhere else did I see so many soldiers. During the night, in the only modest hotel, I was once more surprised by the armed men of the security service. They tried hard to terrify me before letting me go on toward the north. Disappointed at what I had found, and desperate because I couldn't find a way to get to the rebels, I returned to Khartoum. I circled the entire Nuba mountain range. I tried everything to no avail, on foot, by bike. It was impossible. And then, Barbara came to my rescue. My own Barbara. In Kadugli, Barbara managed to get a permit for us to travel to the government peace camps of Um Sadiba and Um Doreim, which I couldn't reach on my own. They kept telling us, a woman in Sudan has no enemy. And it was true, they helped Barbara much more than they'd helped me. Barbara wanted to go straight to the rebels, and so we tried again together. We traveled in comfort, like kings. We invented a whole new kind of tourism. 